Hello and welcome to this getting to know the specification session for the T-level technical qualification in accounting with the occupational specialism assistant accountant. In this session we will give a brief overview of the structure of the T-level technical qualification in accounting. We'll then take a high level look at the occupational specialist component content and assessment. This slide contains an overview of the technical qualification, or TQ for short. The TQ is split into two components, the core and the occupational specialism. There is one occupational specialism, assistant accountant. This is 600 guided learning hours and is assessed through an occupational specialist project. For this particular TQ, your students must undertake the core component and the occupational specialism. The core and occupational specialist components can be delivered however you feel is best for your students, the integration of their industry placement and access to expertise and resources at your centre. For example, you could deliver the core in year one and the occupational specialism in year two, or you could deliver both components at the same time or staggered, starting the core first, then dual teaching and finishing off with the occupational specialism. The choice is totally yours, and for more information on delivery, please make sure you attend our Getting Ready to Teach events. The aim of the rest of this session is to give you an introduction to the Assistant Accountant Occupational Specialism. We'll take a look at how the component is laid out in the specification, and an overview of the assessment structure for the specialism. The general competency framework for T-Levels articulates the English, Maths and Digital competencies that your students are required to develop over the course of the programme. The competencies shown here are those that are relevant to the T-Level technical qualification in accounting. The competencies are embedded in the content of the TQ, and we've referenced in the specification where one or more of the competencies can be developed in relation to the content element. We'll take a look at an example of this in a moment. You will need to seek opportunities to allow your students to develop the relevant skills and you will deliver the competencies through the content. This will enable your students to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding of these skills over the course of their qualification and support the achievement of threshold competence in the specialism. The Assistant Accountant Occupational Specialism has five performance outcomes. Each performance outcome is broken down into a number of skill statements. These are what your students are expected to be able to do or demonstrate. There are also a number of underpinning knowledge statements. These are what your students need to know and understand in order to be able to demonstrate the skills. This is an example of how the specification is laid out. This shows the start of performance outcome 1, produce and analyse a trial balance. At the very top, in the green box, we've included the skills from the general competency framework that your students will need to have the opportunity to demonstrate through the knowledge and skills covered in this performance outcome. You can see D3 and M2 in brackets, and these reference the digital and math skills in, from the framework. Next in the grey box, we have the first specialist skill covered by this performance outcome. You'll see the first skill statement, S1.1, produce an initial and revised trial balance, applying the principles and concepts of double entry bookkeeping for recording and processing financial data to feed into the preparation of primary financial statement for review. So S denotes skill as opposed to knowledge, which is characterised by the letter K. 1 because this is performance outcome 1 and point 1 because this is the first specialist skill within the performance outcome. Under this are two subskills S1.1.1 and S1.1.2. It is the last digit to note here. There are only two subskills. Some skills have more than this. There then follows the underpinning knowledge your students will need. K1.1 key accounting elements and double entry principles under which are a number of sub-knowledge statements. You can see 1.1.1 and 1.1.2 on screen, but in this example there are a total of 10. Let's take a look at another example. This example is also taken from Performance Outcome 1, Produce and Analyse a Trial Balance. But now we're looking at S1.3, so the third specialist skill in Performance Outcome 1. 
post corrections using double entry and journals. Their layout is the same and again you can see at the top in the green box we've included the skills from the general competency framework that we expect your students to have the opportunity to demonstrate through the skills and knowledge covered in this performance outcome. Again you'll note the reference to English and Maths by the E1, E2 and M1 and M2 in brackets. We then have the specialist skill, in this case S1.3 post corrections using double entry and journals. This has been broken down further into sub-skills, and in total there are five sub-skills. You can see on screen S1.3.1 and S1.3.2, but in the specification S1.3.3, 3.4 and 3.5 are featured. All five of the sub-skills are required to achieve the specialist skill S1.3. You'll notice we're still looking at performance outcome 1, and just like our previous example, we're still reviewing the specialist skill S1.3 post-correction using double entry and journals. But now we're looking at the third sub-skill. Remember there are five in total here, so S1.3.3 make adjustments to the initial balances once journals have been prepared. In this example, you can see the specialist skill S1.3 and then the sub-skill 1.3.3. This is followed then by an extract of the underpinning knowledge related to S1.3 that your students will need in order to demonstrate the skill. So in this example, K1.3, control procedures and the correction of errors, including the posting of corrections using double entry journals and the use of control accounts. This is then followed by a subset of knowledge, 1.3.4, giving you further information as to the depth and breadth. Also, again, we've identified the English, Maths and Digital skills from the General Competency Framework in the right-hand column. In this example, the Math skills M1 and M2. You'll notice that sometimes two or three subskills are grouped together and then the underpinning knowledge is listed. This occurs when the knowledge goes across a qualification of subskills. There is a single synoptic assessment for this occupational specialism, which is an extended design, development and implementation project that is set and marked by Pearson. The synoptic element of the project is important to ensure students can demonstrate threshold competence and are able to evidence all of the skills required by the performance outcomes. Your students will undertake the project under supervised assessment conditions. The assessments will take place over multiple sessions up to a combined duration of 17 hours and 25 minutes. The project consists of several activities grouped into eight substantive tasks which total 258 marks and will be awarded at pass, merit or distinction. Each task will be completed either at a date and time set by Pearson or during a window, again set by Pearson, during which you will schedule supervised assessment sessions. We will look at an indicative assessment schedule in a few slides time. The project will present students with tasks that emulate activities undertaken in the workplace situation. There will be an overarching narrative linking the tasks together. Uh, the overarching scenario will always be designed around a scenario in which the student is working with an audit and accounting firm as an assistant accountant and have additional duties of a payroll administrator. They will provide accounting, tax, audit and payroll services to their firm's clients. The project scenario will focus on at least two types of organisation, for example sole trader, partnership or limited company, and their related accounts that will change over a period of time as a response to the progressive nature of the scenario your students move through the tasks. There is a substantial project and the tasks are mapped against the different performance outcomes. Your students will be assessed on their application of the skills listed in the performance outcomes, but they will not be assessed against specific knowledge outcomes. Instead, they will be expected to draw on and apply underpinning knowledge when applying the skills in response to the activities in the tasks. The project's outcomes will consist of a portfolio of evidence submitted either electronically or as a hard copy. You will need to refer to the individual task guidance included within the assessments for further information on how to facilitate each task and how to collate and submit evidence. In the next set of slides we will look at the structure of the project and a little more detail at the tasks. Okay so let's now look at the first four tasks in the project. 
Task 1. In this task, your students will prepare a trial balance and other reports for a given organisation using accounting package software and apply control procedures to complete a reconciliation. Task 1 is split into two, Task 1A and 1B. 1A is the preparation of the trial balance and other reports. A resource document will be provided giving all the necessary information your students will require and their work should be completed using accounting package software. Task 1B is the reconciliation. A resource document and a digital answer booklet are provided for this task and your students should complete their work using spreadsheet and word software. The total duration is two and a half hours and the task is worth 35 marks. This task is timetabled by Pearson. In task two, your students will prepare financial documents related to the given organisation. Task two is split into three. Task 2A, your students will prepare journal entries. In 2B, they will prepare a statement of profit or loss and appropriation account. And in task 2C, they will prepare a statement of financial position. For task 2, you'll be provided with a resource document giving your students the information required to undertake the task. They will also receive a digital answer booklet. This task is worth 22 marks and has a duration of 1 hour 35 minutes, which are again timetabled by Pearson. In task 3, your students will prepare tax computations for a given organisation. The activities in task 3 will include completing a VAT return and responding to short open response questions, consisting of knowledge-based questions, basic calculations, basic computations. This is to assess the skills and content in all areas of PO4 within tax. A resource document and a digital answer booklet will be provided and your students should complete their work using spreadsheet and word processing software. Task 3 is worth 16 marks and is 1 hour 30 minutes in duration. In Task 4, your students will prepare financial documents related to a given organisation. The financial documents are Statement of Profit or Loss, Statement of Changes in Equity, Statement of Financial Position and Statement of Cash Flows. Task 4 is split into four, once for each of the financial documents. A resource document and digital answer booklet will again be provided and your students should complete their work using spreadsheet and word processing software. Task 4 is worth 35 marks and is 2 hours 30 minutes in duration. Let's take a look now at the final four tasks within the project. Tasks 5 and 6 are linked to the skills in Performance Outcome 5, Prepare Computations for Payroll. In Task 5, your students will complete activities that include setting up new employees on a payroll system, responding to queries, short open response questions, consisting of knowledge-based questions, and calculations to assess the skills and content in all areas of Performance Outcome 5. A resource document and digital answer booklet will be provided and your students should complete their work using word processing software. This task is worth 25 marks and has a duration of 1 hour 30 minutes. In task 6, your students will complete the production of a payslip. Activities in this task include calculating gross through to net pay and using these calculations to complete a payslip and respond to queries. A resource document and digital answer booklet will be provided and your students should complete their work using word processing software. The task is worth 24 marks and has a duration of 1 hour 30 minutes, which can be scheduled by you in the window set by Pearson. In task 7, your students will consider auditing requirements and actions in response to the set scenario. The activities respond to assessing the audit skills and content in performance outcome 4. The task is split into three, tasks 7A1, 7A2, 7B and 7C. A resource document and digital answer booklet will be provided and your students should complete their work using word processing software. The task is worth 19 marks and has a duration of 1 hour 20 minutes. Finally, task 8. This is the largest task in the project, 5 hours in duration and worth 82 marks. In task 8, your students will conduct a business performance analysis using the information provided within the set scenario. The task is split into four. In task 8a, your students will be asked to calculate ratios and produce a report. For 8b, they'll produce a cash flow forecast, report an updated cash flow forecast. 8c, they'll prepare budgetary information. And finally, in task 8d, your students will calculate variances and produce a report. 
Resource documents and answer booklets will be provided. For some of the activities within the tasks, your students will be required to use spreadsheet and word processing software. There will be one occupational specialism project series per academic year. This is due to the large amount of context, the synopticity required, and as a result of the linear assessment model. To give you as much teaching time as possible, but avoiding the ESP window and the core examination dates, so as not to disadvantage students who require access to resets, the projects will take place over several weeks across the spring and summer terms. The assessment window is set by Pearson, and the date of the assessment window will be published in the key date schedule. This is published annually and is located on the accounting TQ webpage. On screen, you can see an example timetable that gives you a notional view of how the tasks are intended to be organised. Please note, though, this example is indicative and adjustments may be made in live delivery to account for variables such as the changeable dates of Easter and the placement of school and bank holidays. As you can see, the tasks have been spread out over four weeks. All of the tasks, with the exception of task six, are a set date by Pearson. You will note the space created in the example, and this is to allow for students who benefit from access arrangements, especially additional time to complete their assessments without the tasks overlapping. This ensures that there is space, even for students who are permitted significant amounts of extra time, to complete their assessments in the intended order with no impact on further sessions. Where students suffer from illness during the assessment, there are two approaches you can take. For tasks that are timetabled in specific slots, a student that misses that part of the assessment will apply for special considerations, in the same way as if they were for a missed examination. For task timetable in a window, such as task 6, the student will be able to complete the assessment at a different time to the remainder of the cohort, as long as it can take place within the allowable window. If the student is too unwell to attempt the task at all within the window, then again they will apply for special considerations. OK, so what next? Please do familiarise yourself with the specification and the specimen assessment materials. Make sure you sign up on the Pearson website to receive our monthly T-Level e-bulletin. You can also book onto the Getting Ready to Teach and Getting Ready to Assess events. Watch our administration support videos via our engagement hub and of course make use of the course materials. And finally, please do contact us for more information if required. There are a number of ways that you can contact us, either online, via email or by post. The most direct method is via the Pearson Support Portal. This is an online tool you can use to raise your query and track its progress. We'll inform you once a member of the team has a reply for you. And once you're in the portal, you will have the option to call our dedicated T-Level phone line. We also have two email addresses that you can use for administration and teaching queries, uh, or if you prefer, you can send us post to the address on screen. Thank you very much for listening to this information video. We do hope you found it useful. Finally, please remember to take advantage of our Getting Ready to Teach events, and don't forget to sign up to receive our monthly T-Level e-bulletin. Thank you.